guys. Poppy's World here in front of the world's oldest stereo slash CD player that I've actually bought, owned, and operated for the time being. It's the Iowa NSX V3000 digital audio system. It is when these, they still make these of course, and I, what are they called guys, but CD changer systems, right? This did three of them, I believe. Yes. So, it was really cool, man, and to be able to have three different CDs in here and just switch between them like that, and then also have its EQ. But really, guys, just for a little bit of education and nostalgic purposes, this was my first actual stereo ever getting into digital audio. So once going from like a Pioneer two-channel stereo amplifier that the parents owned, this was the first one that you actually wow I mean it's you know, now it's going into CD mode slide that back in and obviously we've got things misfunctioning so like that would just change it I think it doesn't even work anymore Boom. Nope. Ooh, but if I go to like tuner. Yeah. So I'm just gonna push her in like that. And then you'll see that happen, so. Yep. So, it's not a very efficient system, obviously. Tape it did. It does have the two synchro recordings, so you were able to like record here and then video aux. I don't know why it's in CD. There's CD, but video. Um, that's what I have it in when I've got to do that. So it's probably maybe the first setup you've seen of an actual surround sound um, digital setup operating in a garage. So, yeah, I like it, guys. I really do. I mean, it's saying I've got two discs in there for some reason. I don't know why. And then your tracks would indicate there how many tracks they have. But what's also cool is the little EQ setting. You know, so you can turn EQ off or rock. I mean, it's just it's just old guys. Um, synchro dubbing. That's got to be for the tape recording. Yeah, I can't even. It seems like an analog switch. It would be. Uh, the mic mixing and karaoke demo is probably one of the things you never used off of this because um, it was meant to have two different microphones put in it. And then, yeah, you could listen to the headphones, of course, with both microphones talking into it and recording at the same time. But realistically, what it was kind of meant to, designed to be was for like a fun um, karaoke system for, for kids to kind of... Now, I wonder what the wattage rating on this is, guys. That's got to be like maybe 30 watts by... And I believe this does four channels. It'll actually drive four channels, I think. Uh, why it's relevant now, I don't know. I've got just a, the cheapest DVD player I could possibly find in my house with its remote included, of course. Um, and then a power strip, so I'm not doing things the, uh, the best way here. But um, we were doing um, a small repair on our automobile. And um, we're tackling the job as hard as brakes replacing brakes and replacing all the all the brake components um everything including the rotor um the caliper and the pads um caliper bracket you'd never need to do but so we've got some carbon metallics in here um they are going to be going on my Acura soon so as you can see, and I'm still bound by a cord here. I got my oil pan here, guys. Don't mind the dirty floor. Got my Mac Tools knuckle saver right here. Got a Mac 17 with a 19 in. I indicate the green 19 for know what I'm doing. Um, okay, guys. First step of operations. I am repairing my bumper and my light as those have damaged. Um, as you can see here, the light's still intact, incandescent bulb. Uh, so, it's just a figment of fitting that closed. If any water got in there, it would burst the bulb when it's hot. 
Um, yeah, the car utilizes HIDs, um, high-intensity discharge lamps, um, the, as well as the brights, actually. I've never seen both lights like act like that now. But, guys, and I've got my Jeeper over there, as you can see, with its hood kind of open. But, um, when, so first order of operations, I'm going to be doing something as basic as changing the oil, but then also be doing a more complicated job, like changing the whole brake system out. Um, front and back, too, guys. So I've got, I've got rotors, um, and by the way, don't uh, necessarily go out and splurge on a new set of rotors. Um, have yours turned, if possible. These were turned at the store. They were turned on the lathe. Um, cheap, it's 10 bucks to have them turned per rotor. So if you got two rotors in the front that are kind of warped, well, have them turned and then uh, swap them out with something, you know, decent. So I have, I'll buy my cord here, but I'm going to get a flashlight, guys, so... So that's what we're working with now. Just a basic, you know, little few updates. I've did little upgrades. I have my air mass system and stuff. But um, what the uh, the winner is is right here. So as you can see, I've done a little bit of some work here. But um, these are EBC cross drilled and dimpled rotors. They actually work phenomenally for the summer. Uh, amazing braking performance and they cool down as extremely fast. Um, the only thing about it is if you're coming off of a 150 mile an hour brake or higher, you will warp and spin. You will warp and wobble because they are not they are not your average Brembo's so they will not act um, act uh, properly at 150 plus. So this car doesn't have that much of an issue though. It doesn't really get over 160 ever. They'd be maxed out on the freeway full throttle at fourth gear, maybe not even fifth or sixth. So, um, yeah, so here we go, guys. We're doing a jack, but you need to make sure you are jacking your car up at the jack point, at the point of the frame where you've got to jack it up now. So there's a little lift point right there. Try to put a, um, try to put a, uh, rag or towel in between your lift point but then guys you know match up your capacity to your vehicle you know gross ton weight of a vehicle is normally four thousand pounds a two ton jack should do just that um keep in mind you're only lifting up half of the vehicle so you don't need freaking all the weight there but uh so i'll kind of you know but um so i'm gonna be doing my oil now and uh you know it's pretty basic guys if you don't know how to do that oh gosh i fear for you but um my usb micro it's not my good Pangea cable, so we don't care too much, but $8 USB cable, braided, very nice, guys, the volts, I talked about that before. Um, so, okay, knowing things about doing the repairs on the car, though, you have to, have to, have to put a jack stand underneath. So as you can see, I've got my altar fire, and just bam. Mm-hmm. So you're going to want to put that underneath. Um, there, there are some lift points on the vehicle factory that come with a hook right there. And there should be another uh, factory lift point right there. Yes, sir. Um, you're, you're working off the hook right there with a jack stand. You'd never lift that up with the jack. But guys, don't, don't ever get underneath a car that is just supported by one jack right there. Yeah, I like to leave the jack on, of course, and then put the jack stands. Some people remove the jack stands and whatnot, whatever. So we're going to be operating off of here. We're going to be going off of a 17 millimeter metric socket. We're going to drain our oil out into here. And then we will be putting... I can't really decide what I'm going to be putting in yet. i got a few filters over there. But, um, yeah, I'm going to be going off of something like that. Or just regular Mobile One. Or uh, something a little bit more high-end. The Royal Purple is nice, too. But I also like this a lot. The Amazon because it's made right here in town. So guys, I'll put my uh, tuner back on, and um, I gotta get to uh, change the oil. So I'll have an update for you once I uh, do that. I gotta drop my uh, 17 millimeter socket out, crawl underneath there, let it drain out. Of course, guys, start your car up if you can a little bit before wise because when the motor's hot, it'll loosen up that oil a little bit, so it'll drain out quicker and uh, a little bit more effectively. Uh, as opposed to when the car is sitting there cold and you drain it out, it's going to be your dead weight oil, the cold weight, so 5, 30, 10, 30. The first number is cold. The second number is hot when the engine's hot at 210 or, 210 or below. 
So, you've got your two weights of oil. Decide, never mix the weights. You can you can mix a synthetic blend or a, a synthetic, full synthetic with a non-synthetic. I don't recommend it, but um, never mix weights because you're changing the weight then. So if you do 1030 in a car like my Jeep and you pour 530 into it, oh man, you're, you're changing the whole... Uh, parameters of the oil then now it's not even a 530 or a 1030 anymore it's more like a you know like a freaking 730 but um okay so more you know for around that um match up your oil guys do it when it's a little bit warm um you know you're feeling right there when you are draining him sure let the cap off um it'll give a little bit of air and tides to the side there you know you know, always check and see if you're going with the right oil too. 5W30 API service SJEC. It's the owner's manual engine oil and gasoline engines. Not hard. Check your dipstick, you know. Um, guys, also if you've got an automatic transmission, check those things out. You know, you want to check those things out all the time too. So where's the tranny checker in here? Uh, there should be a transmission. Yeah, right there, guys. Right there is a tranny line. Um, one little key about that though, if you guys don't know this, you should know that. Um, automatic transmission, you gotta check when the car is on. Um, the car has to be running when you check that automatic transmission. Now that's a dipstick, you just pull out and put the trans fluid in there. Well, not that difficult, you gotta go back to the transmission area and kind of pour it in there. Well, or you could pour it in right to the dipstick spot. So, not too hard. Um, one of the other problems I'm constantly fighting is, uh, oil like this. Um, I got a Jeep 92 Cherokee and I also owned a 1995 Jeep Wrangler. Um, YJ and a 92 XJ Cherokee four door as well. Um, all 4.0 liters, the Wrangler had the 2.5 liter four cylinder, but all manual five speeds with the Hurst T handle and constant synchro problems. Constant running in a synchro is being worn out on second gear, most likely. It's always second gear that the synchros wear out on. So, gear oil. If you're having dry shifts, um, you need to put gear oil in there, guys. You gotta go underneath your vehicle, check out the transfer gaze, pull that little half inch plug out. Usually, an extension bar will fit right into it. Uh, so usually a half, inch, a half inch extension will fit right into it. Um, you'll pull that off, you know, that little plug out and stick your finger in there. And if you feel gear oil, you're good to go. If you don't, fix it. Put gear oil in it. Um, you kind of go. I'm just going to show really quick. So I've got a few... Uh, pneumatic tools and items in here. They're not my best stuff. They're just kind of the things to keep outside. Yeah, I got a couple items for detailing still here. Um, um, a few dead removers, scratch removers, things like that, body tools. And then um, it's really the uh, the box down here, the drawer down here that's got the, uh, yep. I want to take a look. It's got the most stuff in it. Um, so what I'm going to be using right now is my oil dry in case I get any oil on the floor. But if you can't um, get oil into like a transmission or into a transfer case, you gotta go with something like that, guys. I'm a poor spout or or keep things easy. Keep things easy. Yeah, I agree. Keep things easy and go with uh, it's not here anymore. Okay. It is no longer here. I used to have an oil spout. It's a, it was a little red thing up that tall. It just went on top of like your oil bottle and half of the thing closed so it would pour in there pretty easily. I think we're going to get that out actually. Um, then we're going to move from there on to stuff on my um, clear oil if I have to. So, you know, my valve cover right there, Simon. Um, I'm just going to get him set up, put him in, drain him, and we should be good to go. Um, once we drain, we do the filter, of course. So we'll be doing the oil filter. Um, it's going to be in the back of the motor, most likely. Yes, sir. Um, no, it's not, actually. It's going to be on this side, passenger wheel. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and do that filter once we have our oil out completely. Take the filter off. Put the new filter on. Um, guys, you know, here, let me do this for you right, right now. Okay, guys, so you're using oil filters, right? Fram, whatnot. I don't care if they're royal purple. I don't care if they're mobile one. Uh, wax or Wix, I mean W I X. Um, so you got to know. Look at what what are you doing with mileage? Uh, Five thousand. Are you going to go a higher end one to ten thousand, or what? Um, decide that, guys, because I am. I put fifteen thousand miles in the Cherokee, of course, and then I put um, 
I'm going to be putting 15,000 in this, but it's got Mobile One in there right now. Mobile One's only good to, you know, three, 4,000. So it's got Mobile One in 530. We're going to go with, a, you know, an extended performance one because winter time now, we don't want to be screwing around with doing all the oil changes anymore. So we're going to be picking our two socket wrenches. Uh, we're going to go with a half inch 17, probably the good Craftsman jewelry. Sterling silver. Yeah, this thing's really nice, guys. Uh, so this is a great piece of equipment to use, but um, more or less always trust the dusty, the trusty dusty Mac tools three eighths. The trusty dusty Mac tools three eighths with the, uh, you know, comes out there locking. And I hear a little bit of Marilyn Manson action right there. Beautiful people. And you can see, guys, these are the speed you should take your finger off. Yeah, I bet the woofers are pushed in on these, huh? Yeah, exactly what I thought. Those are always pushed in on speakers that are old, worn, or utilized by children at some point. Or audiophiles in the, in the growing up. <laughs> So yeah, you can just see the crappiest tweeter, the most generic mid-range, and oh god, the most basic coned paper woofer. But they weren't bad. They did three-way bass reflex. They had two ports like that. Well, you know, so these pump for like 50 watts maybe. But oh god. How about we put these guys in the room with the Ortofon 2M cartridge? <laughs> And uh, put the Parasound preamplifier to him, the Emotiva, huh? That really worked out great, huh? <laughs> no. So we're going to be doing this, guys. i got to plug me in real quick. But um, just looking at the rotors real quick. Make sure you got a Jackson underneath the car. Make sure you're putting on those rotors, and then you're pulling those. There, there are two um, Phillips screws in here on Honda motors, on Honda hubs always. Um, and get your Phillips screws out first, and then do your 14 millimeter caliper bolts and 17 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. Um, you do them so often, you remember them by heart. This car is all metric, basically. The only thing that's not metric on it is the, um, shit, I think the uh, lug nuts are 3 fourths only. That's about it. So I'm going to get to oil, oil changing, guys. Uh, puppies will be back with more updated crap he's doing on the car. Thank you.